Welcome to FBLA PBL's webinar, Who Wants to Be an Officer? FBLA National President Sam Kessler and PBL National President Bo Cobb will offer tips and tricks to make candidates stand out from the crowd as they prepare to campaign to win. I am FBLA PBL Membership Director Lisa Smothers. I will serve as the moderator for today's broadcast. FBLA PBL Communications Manager Laura Morgan will moderate the question and answer portion of our webinar. We encourage you to submit questions at any time during the broadcast using the GoToWebinar toolbar at the top right of your screen. We'll answer questions at the end of this presentation. This webinar will be available to download on our YouTube channel tomorrow. Serving as an officer is one of the most challenging and rewarding experiences that a student can have as a member of FBLA PBL. It takes commitment and responsibility, and it's also a lot of fun. FBLA and PBL members may run for office at the local level, the state level, or the national level. Local and state guidelines for running for office are different for each chapter in every state. Check with your local and state advisors for information and guidelines. At the national level, there are eight FBLA national officers and eight PBL national officers elected at the annual National Leadership Conference each year. The parliamentarian for each team is an appointed position. The person who files an application and has the highest test score on the parliamentary procedure's written exam is appointed to this position. The National Officer Candidate Guide contains the requirements and guidelines for all National Officer candidates and is on the home page of FBLAPBL.org. Before you can lead others, you must be able to lead yourself. In FBLA PBL, this is made available and recognized through an understanding of our organization of the many benefits and opportunities that it provides to its members and advisors. Being a great leader is by inspiring those around you. This means first leading your local chapter by focusing on growing your membership, inspiring the members of your chapter get to get involved in the local, state, and national activities, and attending state and national conferences. It's now my pleasure to turn this session over to our two special guests, FBLA National President Sam Kessler and PBL National President Bo Cobb. Both of these members have run successful officer campaigns on the local, state, and national levels. Sam and Bo, the floor is now yours. Thank you, Mrs. Mothers, and good afternoon, everybody. I'm excited to be speaking to you afternoon, um, this afternoon, and this is Sam, by the way. So whether you're a member thinking about running for an office at any level of our organization or an advisor, helping your student to prepare for an election or campaign, it is crucial that you understand the mission of FBLA PBL, to bring business and education together in a positive working relationship through innovative leadership and career development programs. Anytime you present in front of a business or group to ask for fundraising, they often ask about the mission of FBLA and what it means. So officers need to be prepared to not only say it, but to understand what it means and expand upon some of the leadership and career development programs, which include state and national conferences with leadership workshops that provide networking opportunities with other members and business leaders, the BAA or CMAP awards programs, and the March of Dimes, our national community service partner. In addition, having a firm knowledge of our mission and FBLA PBL HOPE program will help candidates successfully answer questions from voting delegates at the local, state, and national levels. As an officer, your contribution will be measured in direct proportion to your understanding of the FBLA PBL organization. In addition, many states offer different state projects, so it's important to become knowledgeable about these state projects and to help your chapter actively get involved in them. For example, Arkansas FBLA PBL raises money statewide for the Children's Hospital each year. At the national level, one of our best programs that offers the potential for candidates to participate is the FBLA Business Achievement Awards, or the BAAs, and the PBL Career um, and Membership Achievement Program, or CMAP. These programs focus on participating in projects and activities designed to grow local chapters, something that is critical for candidates at any level of this organization to participate in. Candidates or potential candidates, if you did not make the March 1st cutoff deadline for this year, no problem. You can have your advisor register you for the program and start working on it now for recognition in the 2015-2016 membership year. There is no paperwork. Everything is online and interactive. 
Finally, don't be afraid to be creative and think outside of the box and propose new ideas for local, state, and even national projects. One of my platform goals when running for FBLA national president last year was to introduce a new program to help students grow their real businesses. And the product of this goal was a brand new program called Launchpad. Launchpad is a day-long entrepreneurship accelerator that's taking place at this year's NLC. And any student or group of students with a business or, um, or business idea can visit launchpadfbla.org to learn about and apply for this program. And 20 to 30 businesses that are selected as national qualifiers for Launchpad will have the opportunity to spend the day with some highly successful entrepreneurs and business leaders. Also, did you know that our national website lets you submit ideas for national projects? check out the Innovation Center at fblapbl.org. Um, and maybe next time, the next national activity or next national project will be your idea. Bo Cobb, a two-term PBL national officer, will now discuss the importance of attending conferences and some other tips on how to score a campaign win. Thank you so much, Sam, and hello, members and advisors. FBLA and PBL members have the opportunity to travel at the local, state, and national levels. With more than a, with more than a quarter of a million members in FBLA PBL, we have a vast network at our fingertips. Meeting members at conferences is a great way to get your name out there and potentially find a job. More importantly, this is a great conference for local and state officers to interact with other officers from throughout the country and share successful projects and ideas. Candidates for national office will have the opportunity to speak to conference attendees and interact with voting delegates for two days in the campaign hall. The 2015 National Leadership Conference, which will be held in Chicago, Illinois, will feature motivational sessions on a variety of topics and offer such attractions as the Navy Pier, Millennium Park, Willis Tower, and so many more. I encourage you to attend the Institute for Leaders, or IFL, which is held in conjunction with the National Leadership Conference. Did you know that there are sessions designed just for FBLA and PBL officers? These innovative workshops will concentrate on providing officers with strategies for public relations, corporate partnerships, participation in FBLA PBL leadership programs, and tips on how to make FBLA or PBL the must-join organization on your campus. National officer candidates are encouraged, but not required to attend the IFL. Now let's take a look at how to organize a winning officer campaign. There are different requirements for offices at each level of our organizations. Advisors have the duties of the different officer positions for the local and national level in their FBLA or PBL chapter management handbook. For state officer positions, please contact your state advisor. Make sure, to, make sure you review the duties and qualifications for the office that you are seeking. Get a copy of the campaign guidelines and rules. The most important thing that you can do is to talk to the current officer of the level and or position for which you want to run. By doing this, you can find out what to expect if you are elected. Time commitment required, the chaperone policy, conferences and meetings that you attend, and etc. You can also find out about many about any current project that you may include in your campaign platform. Now that we have talked about the different officer levels, let's focus on preparing a national campaign. Did you know that many members decide to run for national office while they are freshmen or sophomores? They begin climbing up the leadership ladder and focusing on building their experience with competitive events, leadership positions, and participating in national programs. Let's take a look at the requirements for the different national officer positions. Thank you, Bo. Only active members are eligible to hold national office. Dues must be paid by March 1st for FBLA or April 15th for PBL. A candidate must have at least one full year remaining in his or her business program. He or she must have hold, hold or have held an elective office at his or her local or state chapter. For Phi Beta Lambda, candidates must hold or have held an elective office in his or her chapter corresponding to higher than or the one for which he or she is applying. A candidate must be present at the National Leadership Conference and officially certified by the officer screening committee to be eligible to campaign. Now let's focus on the position of the five regional vice presidents. 
These national officers assist the presenting and the promotion and development of their respective regions, and they focus on membership growth and retention. They preside at the regional meetings at the NLC and manage regional social media accounts and action councils. Candidates for this position present their two-minute campaign speech at the regional campaign rally and recognition session. A 15-minute question and answer session, total for all candidates, immediately follows the campaign speeches and it also occurs in this session. Each state may nominate members of the parliamentary procedures team representing them at the National Leadership Conference or the individual who scored the highest on the written parliamentary procedures test at their state leadership conference, also as a candidate for national parliamentarian. Candidates for this position must attend the candidate briefing session and take the written parliamentary procedures exam at the National Leadership Conference. Since this office is a non-elected position, candidates for national parliamentarian are the only officer candidates that do not go through candidate interviews. The individual that has met the qualifications for office, has filed an application, and has scored the highest on the written parliamentary procedures exam is appointed to this position. Once appointed, this officer's main duty is to advise the president on the orderly conduct of business in accordance with Robert's rules of order and the bylaws. The national parliamentarian also spearheads the team's public relations plan to promote the March of Dimes, our national community service partner. Candidates for national treasurer must have completed one year of accounting, bookkeeping, or record keeping by the time of their election at the National Leadership Conference. This officer is responsible for keeping an accurate record of all national officer travel throughout the year and manages the National Treasurer's Council. One of the main responsibilities for this office is to spearhead a student campaign to obtain new sponsorships, exhibitors, and scholarships. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. And now for the Office now of National office Secretary. Of national Secretary. Candidates for National Secretary most possess the ability to take minutes and have completed one year of typewriting, keyboarding instruction by the time of the election at the National Leadership Conference. This officer is responsible for preparing the National Officer Team program of work, minutes of conference calls and meetings, a spreadsheet with contact information for state key contacts, and preparing a monthly team summary report of activities. This person is also responsible for reminding the other officers about deadline dates and articles for national publications and preparing the National Officer Team electronic scrapbook. The National Secretary also helps to secure items to make the NLC silent auction a success. The FBLA PBL National President must be able to motivate his or her team. This officer presides over the National Officer Team meetings and business meetings of FBLA or PBL. This officer is a member of the National Board of Directors and is responsible for directing the National Officer Team program of work, which focuses on four areas, customer service, relationships, resources, and image and awareness. This person must have strong communication skills to communicate with state officers and advisors throughout the year. He or she also creates and presents the National Officer Mid-Year Report in January and the annual report for the Summer Board of Directors meeting. He or she represents the organization at trade shows such as the National Business Education Association, NBEA, and the Association of Career and Technical Education, ACTE. If you plan to apply for a 2015-16 national officer position, there are some things that you can begin working on now. First, print the National Officer Candidate Guide and application forms from the national website. Review the qualifications and rules with your local advisor. Next, contact your state advisor and find out the procedure that your state has for nominating national officer candidates. Applications must be received by May 15th. Also, start making a plan and select your campaign manager. And set a budget for your campaign. At the national level, there is a $2,000 limit. You will also need to prepare a financial statement showing your income and your expenses. At the national level, usually the entire state gets behind their national officer candidate. Make a contact sheet for your campaign staff and in the, in, in the late states of your campaign, make a schedule for the National Leadership Conference. I recommend having four or five members sign up for different shifts during their different campaign hours. Your speech, although it's only two minutes, is one of the most important parts of your national officer campaign. 
Some candidates use a cordless microphone without the podium while others use the podium. Use the style that makes you the most comfortable and will allow you to present a polished final product. The time is monitored and strictly enforced. No audiovisual equipment may be used during campaign speeches and business attire must be worn. Next, only the national um, officer candidate can apply and or can participate in the speech. There are no introductions, skits, or props allowed. Successful candidates tie in both a theme and their platform ideas or goals. The earlier you begin working on your speech, the more input you can get from others. Deliver it in front of the entire chapter and even, spe um, and even in the speech and forensic coaches um, and classes at your school. Prepare questions that you think delegates could ask you. And lastly, of course, practice, practice, practice. All right, so some more tips. Make sure that your platform and goals are attainable. Many candidates come up with a colorful boot display and a catchy theme. For example, former FBLA National Treasurer Drew Marks used earn high marks for, for FBLA, vote Drew Marks for National Treasurer. Tie your theme into every aspect of your campaign and be creative. As you plan your campaign and work on materials such as posters, involve as many of your local chapter members as you can. When you get to the National Leadership Conference, make sure that all members of your state are enthused and on board. It will definitely show. Always plan for more materials than you will need, especially any brochures or flyers that contain the qualifications and your goals. Remember to smile and be enthused whenever you are in public, no matter what. Finally, make sure that you have a positive relationship with your opponents. The impression that you make on other people will have a significant impact on how they judge the entire association. As one of the major duties of an FBLA PBL national officer is to serve as an ambassador of, an, as an ambassador of our organization at state conferences trade shows and national conferences. The thing that determines the typical candidate from the strong candidate is the question and answer session following the campaign speeches and how candidates handle the questions from delegates during campaign booth hours. Project yourself as a professional student leader and show enthusiasm when you speak of FBLA PBL. Always have an elevator speech prepared which is no more than 30 seconds to a minute long to give anyone prior to answering the first question. My elevator speech was as follows. Hi everybody, my name is Sam Kessler and I'd like to be your next national president because I'm passionate about FBLA and its ability to give members opportunities and experiences that are gonna prepare them for the real business world. I have the qualities of leadership and the four years of local and state FBLA experience that will be sure to make me an effective national president. And I have some goals that I'm very excited about that will be sure to increase FBLA's global presence, expand its link with entrepreneurship and improve and capitalize upon its relationship with sponsors and partners. Let me know if you have any questions about the steps um, that I will take to achieve these goals. And I'd also love to hear your ideas for our organization. So one of the most important things that you need to focus on with your, in, um, with your campaign is your campaign brochure. And you also need to have your goals clearly highlighted on this document. Voting delegates will want to know what you are going to do for the organization and ultimately how it will affect their local and their state chapters. Your brochure should have an attractive and easy to read layout. Photos and graphics help. Current national officers can answer questions and advise, but they cannot provide quite quotes to candidates. Any photos of the candidate and current national officers should not be put on brochures as they have to remain objective. Many candidates also include a letter to the delegates as part of their campaign literature. Thank you, Sam. Each national officer candidate, with the exception of national parliamentarian, is assigned to an area in the campaign hall for a campaign booth for two days of campaigning. For FBLA, this is a 10 by 10 area and for PBL, it is a six-foot table with two chairs. All items must fit within those dimensions. Successful candidates have a campaign theme, brochures that clearly define their goals, candy, and theme items. Many candidates get donations of either items for money to help defray their campaign costs. There is a $2,000 limit for campaign booths and items. Candidates and campaign staff must be dressed in business attire and man campaign and may campaign in their own campaign booth area. 
Remember, national officer candidate applications are due by May 15th. Only online submissions will be accepted. All national officer candidates must attend the candidate briefing session at the NLC. This session will take place at 7.30 p.m. For PBL, it will be on June 23rd, and for FBLA, it will be on June 28th. All national officer candidates, except for national parliamentarian, must go through interview screening. Each interview will last approximately 15 minutes. Your interview panel will consist of members of the National Board of Directors and current national officers. Candidates, their local advisors, and their state advisors should attend the interview. Remember to arrive at least 15 minutes prior to the scheduled interview time. All national officer candidates except national parliamentarian must have a campaign booth and prepare and present a two minute speech at the national leadership conference. Candidates for national president, secretary and treasurer will give their speeches during the campaign rally during the opening general session. Regional vice presidents will give their speeches on the following day during the regional campaign rally and at the recognition sessions in their respective regions. Candidates will be assigned to an area in the campaign hall for their campaign booths. All candidates and campaign staff must be dressed in business attire during campaign hours. Voting will be done by ballot with the majority vote required for election. If a majority is not reached, the tellers report will be read prior to re-voting. If no candidate receives a majority vote on the third ballot, the candidate receiving the lowest number of votes will be dropped from the fourth ballot. If necessary, the candidate receiving the lowest number of votes shall be dropped from each subsequent ballot until one candidate receives a majority of votes. Election results will be announced during the Awards of Excellence closing ceremony. There will be no rehearsal for the officer installation. There will be a mandatory new officer orientation and breakfast for new officers, their local advisor, and their state advisor from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. on the morning following the Awards of Excellence program. Just dress for this meeting is business casual. All right, thank you, Sam and Bo. Okay, it looks like we had a number of questions submitted during the presentation, so we'll start getting to those now. Um, if we run out of time before we get to your question, we will email you individually to answer any questions that we don't get to this afternoon. And joining us for the question and answer session is FBLA National Secretary Annika Mullaney. So our first question that we received is, what happens at the candidate briefings? Why should I attend and what should I bring with me? Sam, would you like to answer that? Absolutely, thank you, Laura. So um, the dress code for the candidate briefings is business casual um, and it's kind of laid back, but you must bring final copies of campaign speech and campaign brochure data and your campaign brochure and data sheet. Um, also one of each um, and any campaign item and literature, a description of any items um, that will be given at the campaign booth and a written or geographical description of any banners, postered, posters or other decorations in the campaign area. And also um, you're gonna want a written description of any audio visuals to be used. And of course, this is all together in a binder that you're gonna be handing off to the national people. Great, thanks Sam. Okay, the next question is, what are some tips for preparing my campaign speech? Annika, why don't you take this one? Sure, so hi everyone. Um, this speech is a crucial time, and it's the only time when you will have the attention of all the members at the same time. Uh, so when you're writing your speech, I recommend having a clear and relevant message. Um, keep it simple because people don't typically remember much of what they hear. Um, they're going to remember a lot when they're reading your brochure and your information. But at the same time, make sure that you have at least one or a couple of major points that you can focus on and that people will remember. Some candidates in the past have connected their speech to a theme that relates to their campaign, um, and that's something that you could think about doing. And after you write it, make sure you practice out loud and try to find a small audience to listen to you. That will kind of simulate, simulate the audience that you will have at nationals. And um, try to memorize it so that you can focus on your audience during the delivery. Thanks, Annika. Okay, our next question is, can you give me some tips for preparing for the national officer candidate interview that all candidates except parliamentarian participate in? Bo, would you like to share some tips? 
Absolutely. And by the time that you get to the national officer candidate interview, you know, you just need to know that you've made it and you've made it to the interview round. So stay calm, stay cool, stay collected. The people that are interviewing you have the association's vision in heart. So my best advice for the interview session itself is to know exactly what your goals are and to know the vision that you want to go with the association and really, really execute that while speaking to your interviewer. Great, thank you, Bo. Okay, the next question we got is, what are some rules on campaigning? Um, and how about using social media for my campaign? Sam, why don't you address this one? Yep, um, so first off, to address the second part of the question about social media, um, you cannot use social media for campaigning, so that means um, no posting pictures of your campaign booth for people to like, uh, no hashtags for your campaign, and also um, this kind of ties in with the second part of the rules, which is kind of the biggest rule. Um, all campaigning um, has to take place during campaign booth hours, which are designated, or at the campaign rally sessions, and what this means um, kind of ties in with the social media thing, because um, if you're campaigning on social media, odds are you're campaigning outside of the campaign booth hours. And of course, that doesn't mean that an entire day is allocated to campaign booths and to campaigning. It's only campaign booth time. So once those campaign booths close down, you're not able to, you know, talk about your goals and stuff and trying to get other people to vote for you because it's no longer the designated timing. Thank you. Okay, our next question is, can I compete in events at the NLC when I'm running for national office? Um, Annika, why don't you answer this one for us? So yes, you can compete in events, but we only recommend doing objective tests and not performance events. If you are performing, be sure to have campaign workers scheduled for your booth who can answer questions about you and your goals because you will have to leave your booth. Okay, thanks. Right. Um, what should I expect during the entire campaign process and the campaigning time? And what major tips do you have for me for my campaign? Um, let's hear from all of you on this one and we'll start with Sam. All right, um, so the first thing that you are going to um, want to expect from this entire process is it's going to be really tiring. Um, but at the same time, even though it's going to be tiring, um, you're going to have a lot of adrenaline in you, so you're not going to want to eat. You're going to forget to eat. You're going to forget to sleep. So the first thing that I'll tell you, um, and something that was told to me that I'm not sure if I followed as much as I should have when I was campaigning, is make sure that you're eating and sleeping like you should, not only during the campaign time, but leading up to the campaign time, because your nerves might be going. Honestly, the best thing for you is to get as much sleep as possible so you can be coherent and expressive when you talk to your um, booth visitors. And also, just one more tip is make sure you know what you want to talk about at your booths. Um, and this does not mean um, having a script for the exact same thing that you're going to say to absolutely everybody. You heard me talk about my elevator speech um, earlier. That wasn't really, I kind of changed it up throughout the booth, um, throughout the booth time, just as it kind of related with the people who I was speaking to in the States. Make sure you know kind of what you're going to talk about, what you're going to touch on, but also make sure to mold it to everybody, but be confident about it. And to get confidence, you really have to know exactly what you want to achieve as a national officer. Great. Um, Annika, do you want to share some tips on what they should expect? Absolutely. So I agree with everything Sam said. Um, one thing that I noticed when I was campaigning was a lot of people would come up to my booth at the same time, and I wouldn't get to talk to all of them uh, together because I would have already started a conversation with one person, and then another person's just standing and waiting. So to solve that, I think you should ask your fellow chapter and state members to help you out at the campaign booth. Um, you can give them your platform and your qualifications and just ask them to kind of talk a little bit about you for when you are busy with other people. Um, also, like Sam said, remember to sleep well each night so that you can campaign with a fresh brain. And be prepared to talk to anyone. It could be voters, it could be just members that aren't voting, and it could be advisors about your platform and your goals and answer all their questions. And um, the experience, the campaign experience, is very exciting and challenging. Thanks, Annika. Um, and Bo, why don't you share your tips for us for campaigning? All right, so over my 10 years of running national campaigns, and I would have to say, I agree with both Sam and Annika, um, running for office can definitely be a tiring process, um, but what I will say is that it doesn't have to be. 
if you come in with a strategy and you have a great campaign manager, which I'm so thankful to Nick and Matt over my past campaigns, um, you can avoid a lot of things. You know, before I got to the campaign hall in Nashville this summer, I already had my question and answer ceremony. Um, I was already being quizzed on all types of different questions. So definitely do not overlook the Q&A is one of my major tips. Um, and have random people ask you questions from your local and your state chapter. Overall, uh, make sure that you get sleep, but also don't sweat the small stuff. So that's my best tips and tricks for you all. All right, thanks, Bo. Well, um, looks like that's all the time that we have for today. I know that we have several questions we weren't able to get to, so we will email you um, with those answers. We thank you for your questions and for participating. Um, Make sure that you don't miss next month's webinar, which is Step Up to NLC 2015 in Chicago. That will be on April 22nd at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, join the national staff as we team up to prepare you for everything you need to know about the National Leadership Conference this summer. Also, don't forget that you can find all of our past webinars archived on our YouTube channel. These are a great resource to include at your chapter meetings. So that's all for today. Sam, Bo, and Annika, thank you for participating. And thank you everyone for attending, and we hope you have a great week.